begin with breaking news tonight. Fayetteville police are currently investigating a double shooting. It happened on the 900 block of Leverett Avenue. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jennifer Pignate. KNWA's Lance Lloyd is on scene with what we know so far. Lance. know that we're having some technical difficulties here. We'll head back to Lance Lloyd in a few minutes if we can. But what we know about the shooting is that the suspect was um, unidentified so far. He does remain at large. Two people were taken to the hospital. Uh, police believe that uh, the shooter was one of the victim's boyfriends. Now, we don't know the condition of the two people who were taken to the hospital, but this is a, a developing story, and we will give you more information as it becomes available. And we now know the name of the shooting suspect in a deputy involved or the name of a suspect involved in yesterday's deputy involved shooting indicator. The Benton County Sheriff's Office says Heston Murworth barricaded himself in a home on West Mountain Road after deputies were conducting a criminal investigation. Sergeant Shannon Jenkins says deputies fired shots, wounding Murworth. No word on his current condition. The Benton County deputy involved is on paid administrative leave until Arkansas State Police finish its investigation. In a special picture on Nation report, the hogs falling to Florida in the second round of the SEC tournament. Drew Ammon joining us outside of Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. And Drew, a pretty disappointing time for all those players. Yeah, frustrating, Jennifer, when you look at this. A 66-50 win for Florida, the second win for Florida over Arkansas this season. Big topic right now, hot topic, Mike Anderson, his future at Arkansas. This is a guy who led Arkansas to the big dance each of the past two seasons. But you have to go back to 2016, 2015-16, that season, to find the last time Anderson did not lead the Hogs to the big dance. Well, this time around, 2018-19, the Hogs are not going dancing. So perhaps Arkansas will go to the NIT. We will meet and find out. Of course, Mike Anderson is in a situation where... You know, his hogs have been inconsistent this year. They've also had a style of play that some people have criticized. And you have to look at the way this roster was built this season, how much that plays a role in this Arkansas 17-win season. I mean, Mike Anderson, one of the best coaches that to ever do it there. So I don't really know why people want him gone. I mean, basically, Mike got to be greater than the haters, for all I can say. Because, I mean, basically, everybody is saying that basically I hate him. So, you know, Mike always, I mean, Coach Anderson, he can always silence the haters with what he can do. You know, that's it on that one. Yeah, again, that's Daniel Gafford talking. The focal point for Arkansas this season. Mike Anderson's team lost six games at home this season. That's very atypical for a Mike Anderson Razorback coach team. And remember, Arkansas had a six-game winning streak, losing streak, that is, down the stretch late. So this is an Arkansas team that has certainly gone through a lot of bumps this season. Jennifer, we'll keep you posted. Back oh, yeah. To you. Hopefully they're uh, much uh, more prepared for next season. I do think so much. An Alzheimer's care center in Rogers is under scrutiny after allegations of malpractice and lack of quality care for its residents. Before breaking news, KWA's Lance Lloyd was in studio to show us what a whistleblower is saying about Magnolia Place Alzheimer's Special Care Center. The Arkansas Department of Human Services surveyed Magnolia Place Alzheimer's Special Care Center in late January after two outside complaints were made against it in 2018. The survey found the care center is not only making poor medical decisions, but also putting its residents in harm's way. And it's not only the state that claims to have witnessed these discrepancies. And they're acting outside their scope of practice. A former employee who we'll refer to as Julie to protect her identity says Magnolia Place Alzheimer's Special Care Center is facing many issues. There have been people that have family members that have moved their loved ones out because of the staffing, because of the lack of care, because of the lack of accountability. Julie says she witnessed other workers bringing children to work, medication errors, medical staff who weren't qualified, and several deaths that occurred that were out of the ordinary. There's really no accountability for making sure that each person gets their medications. There's no accountability at all. There's also staff there that is not um, 
qualified. They've not been through caregiver training. According to Arkansas regulation for Alzheimer's Special Care Unit, caregivers must complete 30 hours of initial training followed by eight hours of in-service training annually. There have been several falls with major injuries there. As their health declines, it's not being caught quick enough. So by the time they get to the hospital, the patient passes away. We attempted to speak with administrators at Magnolia Place, but they declined to go on camera and instead released this statement saying in part, quote, we were disappointed to learn that someone has called into question our commitment to our residents and the care that we provide to them. Although we have been provided with little detail regarding these reports, we take them seriously. We have reviewed them and believe them to be unfounded. They don't want staff talking to family members, telling them what's going on or what isn't going on. Two complaints were filed with DHS against Magnolia Place in late 2018, but were deemed unsubstantiated. The DHS then surveyed the facility in January and found several discrepancies, like employees not having job descriptions, kitchen staff without proper facial hair covering, and housing residents that require a higher level of care than Magnolia Place can provide. All of those things all affect our residents. Everything that goes on in that building, that's their home. That's where they live. They pay a lot of money to live there. They deserve the care. Now, the DHS says Alzheimer care units are required to keep annual health surveys accessible and available when requested by the public. They are also required to follow a plan of correction to fix any issues. In studio, Lance Lloyd, KNWA, Northwest Arkansas News. And we do now have an update on the breaking news that we told you about at the top of the show. Our Lance Lloyd is live at the scene of a double shooting on Leverett Avenue with police. Uh, uh, David Brashears, Dallas Brashears. Lance, can you hear us? Yes, Jennifer, we are at the scene where two people were shot and taken to the hospital after a double shooting here in Fayetteville. We're joined by Corporal Dallas Brashears. Um, what can you tell us about what has happened? Uh, well, at approximately 9, 12 this evening, uh, we received a call of a disturbance at 900 North Leverett. Officers did arrive on scene and discovered two people with injuries. Uh, they were transported to a local hospital. Uh, right now, I don't have the condition of those those people, but we, are, uh, we don't believe that this was a random shooting. We do believe that the... Uh, the suspect knew the victims. So right now our investigators are working on that. As soon as we have more information, we'll get that out to you. Okay, Corporal Dallas Brashears, thank you so much for joining us. And when we have more information, we'll have that over on our website, nwahomepage.com. Jennifer, let's send it back to you. All right, Leanne, thank you so much for that update. In continuing coverage, the teen driver involved in a deadly crosswalk accident at the University of Arkansas will not be charged as an adult. The 17-year-old driver from Little Rock struck 18-year-old Andrea Torres on February 8th at the Garland Avenue crosswalk. Torres was taken to the hospital where she died two days later. According to U of A police, the driver was cited for distracted driving for being on her phone behind the wheel. The case has been turned over to the juvenile court system. A local lawmaker introducing a bill to grant in-state college tuition to students who have lived in Arkansas for at least three years. Advocates for undocumented students have pushed for such a measure, often called the Arkansas Dream Act, for years. At least 18 states, including Texas, have similar laws in place. The idea was championed by Governor Mike Huckabee in 2005 and passed the House, but failed by a single vote in the Senate. Now Arkansas State Representative Dan Douglas says it's the right thing to do. This is their home as much as it is my grandchildren's home because this is where they've lived their entire life and, you know, it would affect many different nationalities, many different immigrants that want to go on, get higher degrees and better educations to give them hope for a better future here in the state of Arkansas. Right now, some immigrants pay up to three times the tuition rate compared to Arkansas residents. The bill has passed through the House of Education and is now on its way to the Arkansas Senate. Time is running out for Congress to renew mental health services. The new plan, a group of bipartisan lawmakers introduced to hold the door open. That's coming up, but first, Dan. Time is running out for the wind as well. The wind's going to be dying down over the weekend. We can't wait for that. Check out the almanac. A little misleading because that 58 high temperature was a little after 4 o'clock in the morning, and it was chilly throughout the day. Warmer weather ahead, lighter winds. It's a beautiful forecast. That's coming up next. You're watching KNWA News at 10 with Jennifer Pinata, Chief